Hello, everyone. I am so excited for today for numerous reasons. One, I am Deborah Pascali Bonaro, and we are birthing today our, my newest book, The Ultimate Guide to Sex After Baby, Secrets to Love and Intimacy. And part of this journey for me is that I am the director of the documentary Orgasmic Birth, The Best Kept Secret. So years ago, I started on a journey of exploring the connection of sexuality to all our life. It's a part of who we are in pregnancy, in birth, and in postpartum. So when I was began this journey many, many years ago, I was really blessed to meet Naoli Vinever, who is here with us today. And she is an expert in our documentary, Orgasmic Birth. And so I was so excited when she agreed to join me today in this next new birth that I have. And let me tell you a little bit about her because she's incredible. She's a Mexican midwife and she speaks at international conferences around the world and she's passionate about sexuality, birth, and the vital changing mysterious flow of energy which we serve navigate and create in our lives. She teaches several intensive and online workshops on diverse topics, including tantric birth, one of my favorite. Naoli has spoken in TED Talks, conferences, seminars, and workshops around the world for 30 years and in over 30 countries. She's been a midwife for over 1,600. Wow. Cleaning the concepts and the myths that have been created around sexuality for centuries regarding that sexuality is a physical act for people to procreate and that it is a lowly instinct that should be disconsidered as part of a you know a high part of the character of people and also <clears throat> i feel that when we look at the recent decades with so much pornography and so much um, pollution regarding the topic of sexuality, people, especially the newer generations, have been exposed to so much pornography as a means of education that people have pretty much lost the connection with the root of eroticism. And the older generations, they have also been contaminated mostly by religion. So it's either religion or pornography, but either one or the other are poles. They are contrasting poles that do not allow for true intimacy, true eroticism to have its own place, its own space of vastness and warmth and even space to explore and to encounter and get to explore and just you know mostly the discovery of it of that energy in a personal level it has to be cleaned you know it's like one has to very much go back to the very first memories and very first images and the very first interactions as well of our own eroticism and intimacy and most women most men also will refer to those memories and experiences as being contaminated so i think first of all we need to clean ourselves clean our memories and clean our traumas so that we can get to a point of perceiving the essence like the vibrational essence the the subtle connection between oneself and oneself or oneself and another to be able to rediscover and perhaps for the first time um, be surprised by what true eroticism is. So I would begin by saying that. I like that so much. You know, your words that it's contaminated. What a powerful word, right? And looking at the roots of pornography and religion and I sometimes even say, right, it's the silence that we haven't talked about it also brings us that 
shame and contamination. So what are some of the ways that people can kind of reflect and then create a wholeness? How can we kind of clean those myths or those messages? Okay, well, I think first of all, if we can actually have consciousness about it, when we are having an intimate interaction with ourselves or with another, to be very attentive to the images, to the thoughts, to the expectations, and to the references that we go into in order to enact a sexual encounter. And most people are exhausted or in a hurry or just not focused enough to have that quiet moment of observation and reflection. And I believe that if we can actually give ourselves, just like a gift, moments of quiet, um, just even, even half an hour, you know, little capsules of uh, pearls that we can touch another person looking into the eyes, um, having a sweet, quiet moment together of feeling the soul of the person. Because the true nature of eroticism is not in the technique of how to do a sexual act, how to uh, do oral sex or how to stimulate the clitoris or how to kiss in a proper way. The actual nature of it lives in the way that we connect soul to soul with another person or even with ourselves. You know, that space of time without time that moment in which the person is not thinking on the chores of the house or the things we need to do or the cell phone or the media, like a moment of full presence. And when we have that full presence undisturbed, we can be amazed that even four minutes, three minutes seem like a universe. You know, they seem like a eternal moment because it's called bliss. And when we can actually enter a blissful moment of connection, we can feel, you know, if we caress the person, and it doesn't need to be a genital caress, if we caress the cheek of the person, or if we caress the forehead, or if we touch the neck, or just put our hands on the chest of the person and look deeply in the eyes, many times you will start feeling like a rush of energy coming alive that rush of energy may develop into the erotic, typically erotic arena, which connects the heart with the body. So if we jump over this step, if we just go directly to touch the body, directly to stimulate the breast, the genitals, you know, the kissing and go into the hot, you know, conventionally considered sexual parts of the body, sometimes people will miss the connection between the soul and the body. It's like you have to make a connection so they can um, get connected. How would you say it? Latched. Yeah. And once the soul and the body get latched, the body can begin acting and, and having an effervescence, an energetic effervescence of vital energy that begins to want to be expanded together with the other person. And when we apply this to the postpartum period, considering that most times women are exhausted from nursing and changing diapers and waking up several times a day, and also our companions are pretty tired most times because the house requires so much more work. And if there are other children and work, and you know, all all of us have gone through uh, periods, periods of time or we can barely sleep so we can't even think of sex but the sex doesn't have to be the intercourse you know the the genital you know typical intercourse um that sometimes men who are so contaminated with pornography or even women who are too they might have that as a goal or an expectation so the goal has to be taken away. There should be no goal. 
And once you don't have a goal and you don't have an expectation of a specific outcome, you can just live in the present moment and connect with the person. And if that connection is profound, then the body, as, as you can caress very subtly, very gently, very lovingly, then many times that essence of eroticism will be woken up and will take on space and it can grow in vast dimensions. Yeah. So. so beautifully said. And I love the not having expectations and being in the moment, especially, I mean, I think that's valuable for all of us every day, but so important as you're those that are today, our home, especially in these times with young babies, and that removing that expectation is so important. I wanted to ask you, and we didn't plan on this, but I thought we're in the moment, is that I know that you and I agree that depending on how the birth is, that can affect how women feel about their body and even being ready to kind of connect postpartum, the timeline of when women feel more ready for to open into their sexuality varies. What would you say about how does preparing for birth matter in how we bring that into our postpartum sexuality? I think it's a very good question very good point because one of the main points that I make as a midwife to birthing mothers to future birthing mothers during pregnancy is to be prepared to live in the present moment during their births to not be worrying about how long it will take and if they can take it or not if the pain is too much to be able to get out of one's mind and forget the goal. Not that you forget that you're going to have a baby, but the goal is not to um, have a certain kind of birth and not another kind of birth. It has to be in the water. Oh, I have to give birth squatting, or I have to have this beautiful um, romantic film of my birth. It, it should be a moment in which the woman is widely surrendered to her nature to her nature as a female, to her nature as a powerful, explosive force. So if the woman during pregnancy can prepare herself to surrender and give everything she's got, to be prepared to allow her body and her instincts to guide her, and also to not have an agenda on how the birth should be, usually what happens is that she will have a birth that has much more chances of being uh, very fulfilling to her, no matter what the birth is. And at the same time, that once the baby's born and she goes into the postpartum period, you know, the immediate postpartum, but mostly that period of 40 days, three months, six months after the baby's born, she will have already connected to that vital force that she is a part of. It's not something that just happened during the, during the birth. It is an energy that belongs to us. And everybody knows that a wild birthing woman most times sounds like she's having this wild sex. sex. <laughs> the sounds and the movements and the way she grabs sometimes her partner or she's just wow, expressing herself in a very free and open way that wild woman, most times, if she had a natural birth in which she's conscious of the beauty and the expansion of her spirit through the physical experience, she will have a better life um, sexually in the postpartum. She will be a woman who, when she feels her body touched or her sexuality flowering and blossoming um, as a woman after the baby's born, Usually women relate to bigger and better and more connected orgasms. If, of course, her partners are on board with the experience. Sometimes the partners get um, a little bit, um, let's say, I wouldn't say menaced, but um, overwhelmed by seeing a powerful woman in front of their eyes when perhaps they didn't know her with such power and such capacity of uh, you know, rendering life. So... 
if the woman can actually be conscious of that being in the presence and not letting her mind guide in pregnancy and birth, usually in the postpartum, she will be able to also continue. It's kind of like learning by a true, um, just a, like a non-fail. You, you cannot fail, but learn when you're giving birth. And one of the big, big things you learn is you can't be only in your mind. So in the postpartum, the woman will already be a master at it, which is different from a woman who perhaps had, you know, uh, anesthesia or an epidural or analgesia in birth. Those women who sometimes need it, you know, they feel they need it and, and they might actually physiologically have gone to a point of needing it, will have to um, reclaim that power and, and learn it. And sometimes it may be a longer path or a more um, convoluted little path for her to regain the confidence and the trust in her own sexual self because the closure or the climax of her sexuality being the birth of her child after the nine months of being pregnant was, um, you know, not blocked, but maybe interrupted or disturbed. So sometimes in the case of births that have been disturbed and intervened, the women will have to conquer and um, discover a, a different way, a different path to her own plenitude, to her own self-assurance and confidence. But it's a beautiful path. I don't think that challenges uh, should make people feel, oh, I'm, I'm less advantaged or I'm, I'm damaged goods or oh, she can do it because she had a good birth. No, it's beautiful that anything we don't already have, hey, we have the opportunity to go after it and, and to be curious and to you know, explore the different paths. And the actual exploration is what makes life worthwhile, not the goal. We should always forget about the goal. It is not the goal. It's not the orgasm. It is not how many orgasms. It's not how many times a week we have sex. It's not... Um, what is expected in our minds. It's actually the path we, we follow, the exploration of the different possibilities that makes life worth living. How beautiful. I felt like the magic of it all as you were saying that, right? Really being in that present. And I love to, you know, seeing that no matter what birth asks of us, because we don't know, right? We prepare in that way. And but that we can still welcome into that postpartum. And you used language that I, I, even when I read it initially, you said, let's talk about desirous energy versus, versus placid plentitude. So you kind of began that here. Can you take us even deeper now? Yes. Um, when I was writing that as a topic for today's talk, the desirous energy, you could call it also heat, right? When you're hot, when you just feel what some people would say horny or just outright wanting sex or wanting to eat your man or your woman, you know, just raw heat. And the other one is that plenitude that's a feeling already of satisfaction. Most women in the postpartum will all pretty much have a feeling of plenitude and satisfaction because the process of raising a baby, having a baby in your arms for hours and hours a day and night and having the baby suck on your breast, right? Hour after hour and creating the hormones of love, the oxytocin, the prolactin, the, the relaxing, the just cocktail of deliciousness. So I, I often see, and perhaps it was my experience as a woman as well, that we are quite satisfied to have this baby sucking. And then when we see our partner coming over and wanting to get into the sexual realm, of also sucking on the breast and, and getting 
the woman in the postpartum out of her little, just warm, satisfied, um, exhausted self. Some women get a little bit um, resentful of the demand. But on the other hand, there are women in the postpartum who are so connected and so in tune with that wild sexual woman self who gave birth that they just want to carry on. It's like this wild woman woke up and she just wants more of that. So you can have from those two ex extremes all sorts of different um, experiences for women. And I think that what is most important is to realize that either you are desirous and hungry and hot or you're just plastic and feeling fulfilled and 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 anything in between is beautiful there's not one better than the other and what we need to do is let's imagine the woman is more on the placid satisfied fulfilled state from having a baby and from being in love with your baby because many many women we just like fall in love with our babies and and sometimes the partners kind of feel like well what about me am i still you know desired am i still uh, part of your um, menu for you know your appetite and i think that that's where the connection of the soul the, the eroticism that arises from the connection of looking at your partner and feeling that warm caress that beautiful touch, a little massage, the, the soul of the two people will connect. And from that caressing, that's very soft and very soul oriented, can then um, just take over the body and the hormones will help. And the beautiful love and the eroticism can be born from what apparently seems to be ashes. You know, some people think, oh, there's nothing left but ashes in the postpartum. But those ashes, if you blow on them gently, you know, from this connectedness, there is lots of fire and the fires tend to be very big, you know, because the woman knows already the path is like her channels, her canals are open to that fire. Wow. Oh, so beautiful. Your expressions, your words, you know, just bring me into the visual of all the power that's there and and how often we don't acknowledge it right too many people postpartum don't acknowledge that there's a difference from those hormones and them getting all that yumminess from the baby right and it is such an issue for parents and how they keep that fire i love the analogy of you know just blow on those ashes and they come so what other tips before we end? Is there something else you'd like to share? And then we'll be opening up for questions here. So those that are with us in Zoom, if you do have a comment or question, please type it in the chat. But please share with us, what else would you like to say that I would like helps to say, mark this? Um, one thing that I felt always and continue to feel Anytime there is a challenging moment or, or maybe a moment in which one person and the other don't see eye to eye, not, they don't agree, they feel differently, and they, they could potentially just be polarized because they don't see things in the same way. I think what element can make people come together and have their hearts warm up and be able to continue together and in union to even discover um, spaces that they can actually blend back together is the sense of humor. Just plain sense of humor. Making, being able to make a joke, a loving joke, not an acid, sarcastic joke of alienation, separation, or putting down the other person or, or judgmental, but capacity to um, self-observe oneself and it's very interesting how when a person who is a, a comic you know somebody who who is a, a famous comic in the world what they often do is that they are capable of looking at themselves looking at themselves and finding 
like the, the, the funniness of it or the absurdity of oneself. So if we can actually do that for ourselves and with each other, that we can actually laugh at the situation together, not at each other, but together, observing it as a common situation, a common phenomena of the couple, then together already there is, um, there is a communion. Already the, the, be able, the being able to laugh will, will the people... Uh, will make the people already merge. And from that merging, that um, union of, of sense of humor and laughter, many times you can just end up making love spontaneously because it was just hilarious and funny and ridiculous. You know, it's been three months since we had love, you know, made love or we even touched each other. So I think that creativity and humor and that humor with creativity with compassion and love and the capacity to understand that everything will pass. And it's just a moment that we're going through, but it's not a way of saying, oh, it's just a bitter, bad moment. No, it's a funny, interesting, absolutely outrageous moment. What can we do about it together? You know, and if all you can do is laugh and give each other caresses and, and in a minute, the other one is going to be snoring, let that be it because exhaustion is real yes. and and if you manage to be together even in the funny and the and the surreal and the absurdity of this lack of sex as some people may say then in two months in a month maybe in a week in half an hour all of a sudden things change and then you're like oh my god wow I didn't think we would make love and look at this amazing sex we just had and it all began because we looked at each other deeply in the eyes and and we saw each other you know to be able to see each other yeah so beautiful that was such great words of wisdom I know that all that are here we're getting many words Christine humor with creativity is a wonderful thought she said and Stephanie Larson's here with us from dancing for birth great to see you and Alexa um, so what I'd like to do before we say goodbye to those on YouTube and open our room up here is have you share how can people find you what's your website your instagram they want to get into your classes well i'm very happy to share that i have just uh launched some uh beautiful online workshops the online workshops that have all about um just birth related it's the art of birth and these online workshops you can actually subscribe already on my website which is www.naolivinav Com. And it's in three languages. It'll be in, in Spanish, in English, and Portuguese for the time being. Wow. Yes. And it's going to be, um, for now, this first month, you know, a, a big discount because of the solidarity of the times. Everybody's staying home and everybody needs to continue learning, expanding, connecting. People are not making money. So I think in solidarity times, we are always full of resources you know love is what we most have so i hope that you can join me and the instagram is naoli vinaved official naoli dot vinaved dot official you can join uh, some of my posts there too and i love to hear from you always ah uh, thank and you, you know what else oh there i am absolutely excited about your book your upcoming oh. book i am so excited and I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about it because I would like to hear about it. Oh, I, I would love to do that because I, it really came out of orgasmic birth, right? The more we talk about our sexuality, the more the issues of postpartum sexuality came up. So this is a book with many people's stories. I have to really thank all the people who opened up their stories, both of their challenges and of their juicy sex. I say it's kind of like 50 shades of gray, but real stories, but also with nine actionable steps that we all can take. And I call them our pleasures treasures, our pleasures chest. And so it's really a lot of 
guidance on how each of you can create this for yourself. Because as you said so well, we all have a path to that connection, but we come at it from different ways. And your guidance of kind of really clearing that, you know, what was it, religion or porn or where did our beliefs come to looking at our birth stories, to looking at body image. There's so many layers to it. So I'm excited today for anybody who goes to Amazon Kindle today and buys the book. As you said, because of these special times, we're donating $2 from every book sale to people that are pregnant and parenting that need food on their table. So uh, today is the day we hope the more people that buy the Kindle version today, the more we can get visibility, because I think we all need more love and connection more than ever. So our title again is The Ultimate Guide to Sex After Baby, Secrets to Love and Intimacy. And I'm putting it into the chat too, because if you buy the book and then come back over to our orgasmicbirth.com website and enter your receipt in, we have a hundred dollars worth of free giveaways for you, including our orgasmic birth virtual conference, which you're also a speaker in and did a great session. So there are 20 other experts where you'll get access to that is really some phenomenal um, webinars that you can have lifetime access to to watch at your own time and place. So for everyone who's joined us, I thank you so much, Naoli. It's just so, such a joy. I miss you so much. We've had so many special moments over the years. And so even though the distance is keeping us apart now, I just felt your love and your wisdom so, so, so much. I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody that is on YouTube, those that are here in Zoom stay, because now we open up to all your videos and questions and comments. And those on YouTube, if you wanna be inside the Zoom room next time, join our mailing list at orgasmicbirth.com. So you'll get the invite to join the inside parties, um, as well as follow us on Instagram at orgasmicbirth. So goodbye.